my name is Austin Leibel. I am a trainer at Pragmatic Works where we do training on things like SQL, like the Power Platform, and Azure. Today, I'm going to be doing another video in my series on how to write T-SQL, Transact SQL, like a pro. And today, what we're going to be talking about when SQL is views, views inside of a SQL database. Now, what is a view? I get asked that question very often in some of the different trainings I do on SQL for our different customers. Well, a view is a virtual table that is based on the result of a select statement. So a view does not store data itself. It's not a table on a database. It's a virtual table. So the data is not physically stored there and it does not exist on the database, but it rather provides a way to look at data from one or more tables as if they were a single table. One of the main advantages of a view is that they can be used to simplify the structure of a database and make it easier to work with. For example, if a database has several tables that are related to one or more tables in a very complex way, a view can be created to present the data in a more simple and more intuitive way. So additionally, views can be used to also restrict access to certain columns or rows of a table and make it easier to control access to sensitive data. Let's head now over to SSMS or SQL Server Management Studio and check out how we can look at a view, how we can create a view, and just what is a view itself. So let's head over now to SSMS. All right, I'm inside of SQL Server Management Studio and I have a script already on my database uh, query window saying, hey, I wanna go through and look at a table on my database, this sales.salesperson table. And I also want to look at a view and I'm gonna compare them together and just show you the difference of what they look like. So this is going to be very similar data to one another, but we're going to add some additional data because this view has been used with a join for several other tables in our database to be able to kind of give us more information, flavor our salesperson data a little bit more. I am, of course, working with the AdventureWorks 2019 database, and both this table and this view are by default loaded into that database. Now, I'm going to go and run both of these tables and views at the same time, and I'm going to show you what it is compared to one another. So we have here at the top our table. This is sales.salesperson. It has some great information like your business entity ID, which territory you're located in, the sales quota, sales year to date, things of that nature. What the view adds in is some additional information at the bottom. You can see that it has also the business entity ID, but it also has data like the first name, middle name, last name, your job title, uh, things like your email address, your address where you live, uh, and then it has, of course, that other information as well, but we can add in uh, things like the sales quota, the sales last year, territory name, country region name. So this has more data available to us. Now, how do I know what a view is? How do I know where to go and find it and where to look for views? Well, if I'm using SSMS, I can go inside of my database and there will be an expandable folder that's called views right underneath my tables. So if I expand my different views, I can go through and see all the views that have been created on my database, ones that I have access to and ones that I can go use for myself. Now, I can go and find this sales.v salesperson for view, and if I want to see what this view is structured as, I can do a right click on top of it. I can go over and script the view as and create that script to a new query window. And what that does is it provides me a look to see how this view was built originally. So this view was created by using the syntax create view and giving it a name. And then it creates with, with a select statement. And we can see this select statement has many different columns. And coming down here to where the, the, the join start to happen. This is complicated, right? Uh, this is just a lot of inner joins. We're having to relate different uh, columns together to bring in all this data in one place. Imagine going through and trying to write this SQL statement every time you want to go see this data. Uh, these tables aren't, you know, because of like normalization,
creation process of kind of making sure our database isn't uh, taking on more data than it needs and having data stored in different tables that don't need to be there. Uh, we want to kind of segregate that data, separate it, but we want to also bring it together. A view is a perfect use case to be able to do that. And you can see right here, instead of having to go and write these different joins over and over again or save this script on your machine or anything like that, uh, this is scripted for us. It's a virtual table. We can go and access it whenever we need to. Now, what we can also do is create our own view, assuming you have permission to do that on the database. So I'm going to go over here and create a new query window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a view that only allows me to see certain uh, territories with my sales.customer data. So again, to restrict access to certain uh, data that maybe I don't have access to. Maybe I'm a salesperson for just territory ID one, and I don't want to see any of the data from territory ID two, three, four, five, etc. So what I can do is I can use the syntax create view, and I'm going to give this view a name. I'm going to call it territory one. And then I'm going to come here and say as, and you can put your as there, or you can put it on the next line as well. But after your as, we're going to write a select statement. So this select statement will be something that you could potentially run. It's a SQL script that you could run separate, but the view is going to create this again as that virtual table inside of our database. So we're going to say what this is. Of course, we want to come down here and specify our sales.customer table first. Go back, write our select statement. So we could say something like, customer ID would be perfect for this table, as well as the territory ID as well. And then once we go through, we also want to restrict this just to see territory ID one. So we're going to come in here and bring in a where statement to do some filtering. And we're going to say where territory ID is equal to one. So create view called territory one as this select statement. So again, I can run this select statement right here, and this is just going to show me what the view is composed of. But when I run this entire script, it's going to allow me to create that view very quickly. Again, the data is not physically stored here. So what I can do is do a nice refresh on my different views and see that DBO database owner dot territory one was created for myself. I can go through here now, select the top 1,000 rows, and there we have it. I have restricted just this view to see the territory IDs uh, one for different, different customers that live in that territory. Again, just a really awesome way we can do this. Now, one other thing we can do with a view in a great use case is to create some sort of aggregation. So I'm going to create an aggregated view as well. I'm going to type again the syntax create view. I'm going to call this view products above average price products above average price if we want to see all the products that are above the average price we can create the view to do that so we can just keep a record of that for ourselves instead of having to go again and write this SQL over and over so we're gonna say as select and we're gonna come in here and we want the name of the product as well as the list price so we're going to bring in those two columns. We're going to go ahead and do our from production dot product from production dot product. And then we're going to do a filter here as well where we write our aggregation. So I'm going to actually pull in a where statement and say where the list price is greater than. And then what I'm about to do next is something called a subquery. A subquery is a way that you can go through and write a query to pull back results from a table and have that results be aggregated for yourself. There's a lot of different things you can do with subqueries. It's a different alternative way to join data. So uh, subqueries are just an alternative pattern to be able to return certain results for ourselves. So what I'm going to do here we say where the list price is greater than, and then I'm going to write another select statement. I'm going to write select, and then I'm going to come over here and say from production.product, again, from production.product. And for my select statement, I'm going to pull over the average of the list price. I'm going to bring over the average of the list price from production.product. I'm going to wrap this up in its own separate parentheses, and I'm going to put that semicolon at the end. So now, again, I can run this for itself. It's going to execute correctly. This is what I want to see for myself. Again, the products above the average price. I'm going to go ahead and create that entire view. Again, 
go ahead and do a quick refresh on my views here. And then I can go through and see this dbo.products above average price that has been scripted for myself where I can go and query that individually and it will update dynamically as the data does as well. So again, this has just been a kind of a brief introduction to what we're talking about with like SQL views. And hopefully this has been a very helpful use case for you of where you could use a view to benefit yourself when writing SQL. Again, doing large join statements, tables that take a, a lot of different joins to bring together with different complex columns, uh, being able to restrict data just to see certain uh, IDs or territories or things of that nature for a sales data, or potentially doing some sort of aggregate for review as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you want to know more about writing SQL and scaling up your SQL knowledge, definitely check out our on-demand learning platform where we have some great courses around SQL, as well as one of our boot camps on an introduction to T-SQL, where you can go take a three-day boot camp, scale up your knowledge very quickly, and start helping your department and returning different SQL statements for yourself. Hopefully you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next one.